Hello, my grade 9 students! Welcome to our arts lesson for today! I just want you to know that even if you don't have a module right now, I'll make sure to it that everything is well presented here regarding our topic, Western and Classical Art Traditions. All you have to do is to watch and listen because I will bring you to the different periods of Western classical arts. Our learning competency for this lesson is analyzes art elements and principles in the productions of work following the style of a Western and classical art. Before we proceed to our main topic for this lesson, we need to refresh and review our elements of art and principles of arts and design so you can identify how the Western classical art uses the elements and principles of arts. So let's start learning on the elements of arts. think is the common thing that you can notice? Yes, it's line. And artwork are made up of different lines. Each of these pictures shows similar thing, but one main idea that differentiates them is how the artist used lines in that artwork. Line is one of the seven elements of arts. Among them are the shape, color, texture, form, value, and space. These seven elements are the building blocks of all art and are a great way to start in analyzing or interpreting a work of art. Line is a point created when one object moves from one point to another. In the visual art, line can be horizontal, vertical, diagonal, straight, curve, or freeform. They can be thick or thin, light or dark. Sometimes, when line can be all of this thing, it will create an art. What quality do you see in this line? How would you describe them? Every artist has its unique way of applying these lines. It's one way of expressing our individual style. The next element of the art is the shape. When the beginning of a line connects with its own ends or intersect along with another, it creates shape. Shapes are enclosed in two-dimensional space. That means depth, length, and width. They are always flat. There are countless shapes that we can divide into two main categories. Geometric shapes and organic shapes. Geometric shapes can be determined mathematically. They are known as regular shapes. They always have a specific name such as circle, square, or rectangle and they can be often seen in nature. 
The second category of shape is the organic shape. It can be found in the nature like leaves or water. They are irregular, really curvy. We have names for specific organic shapes such as stars, moon, or heart. But most of them doesn't have a name. The third element of art is the color. Color is created when light strikes an object and reflects back into your eyes. All colors comes from the three primary colors and it can also be seen in black and white. The primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. You can now make a primary color. Primary colors are mixed together to create another colors, like the secondary colors. The secondary colors are combinations of two of the primary colors in equal amounts. Red plus yellow equals orange. Yellow plus blue equals green. And blue plus red equals purple. Tertiary colors are combination of primary color and secondary color. When you are making a tertiary color, the primary color is always named first, such as red-orange and yellow-orange. Altogether, they form a color wheel. The color wheel organized a color. The circle shows the relationship between the colors. The next element is the texture. Texture is something that feels or looks like, or as if you might feel, as if it was touched. The feelings of textures are hard or soft, rough or smooth, matte or glossy. Texture can be actual or implied. You can create a texture for a person to actually feel on the artwork surface. Or you can use drawing technique to make a flat artwork appear to be textured. Another element of art is the form. Form must have a height, width, and depth. It's three-dimensional. There are two types of form, the geometric form and the organic form. The geometric form has a specific name such as cone, cubes, or pyramid. They are typically man-made. While the organic form don't have a specific name. Forms can be created in actual or implied way. In actual way, some freestanding sculpture taking three-dimensional space so they can be viewed from any angle. And for the implied way, some other sculpture consists of sculptural three-dimensional elements attached to a solid background. 
Another element of art is the value. Value is how light or dark a color looks like. It is used to break an object like a three-dimensional. The value scale shows you the value of white to black. Tint is a color mixed of white. So we can see red becomes pink and blue becomes light blue. In value, there is also shade. Shade is a color mixed with black. Tone is also present in value because tone produced by mixing a color with gray. See? You can change the value of the color through tinting, shading, and toning. And the last element of art is space. Space is the area where artwork is placed. It can be within an artwork like a drawing or a painting and also contains surrounding area of artwork. There are three types of space. We have the positive, negative, and white. Positive space is created in the areas that are occupied by an object. And the negative space can be seen around the object. And the white space are created space between the objects. Using the space of the object is what we call composition. Depending on how you use the space, we can fill it. It's either a crowded, open, orderly, chaotic, or playful. Artist uses several techniques to create the illusions of space within the two-dimensional artwork. Relative size, varying use and values. Contrast of focus and blur. Overlapping. Different placement and the use of one or two perspective gives the three dimensional of space. Perspective is a volume of space or three dimensional object on a flat surface. On a parallel line, extend from an object and meet together on a horizontal line that is a vanishing point. A drawing has a one-point perspective when it contains only one vanishing point on a horizontal line. A two-point perspective uses two vanishing points on a horizontal line. And we can create now something interesting artwork through various activities. A man paints with his brain and not with his hands. This is an important statement that mirrors the fact of art making. That art is not merely just a product of a skillful hand, but if once a creative mind expresses his experiences, visions, and adventures that inspires him to express his feelings. The principles of arts and designs. Number one is the rhythm. 
Rhythm is the repetition of the elements of art and pattern. Rhythm is made when something in the artwork repeats itself to create a pattern. Notice how the artist uses a series of black and white shapes to create a spiral pattern in this artwork. Number two is the emphasis. Emphasis is one part of an artwork is dominant over other parts. To use emphasis is to create a strong difference in one part of the artwork compared to the other parts. This artist used a different color to set one object apart from the others. The third one is the balance. Balance equalizing visual forces or elements in an artwork. We have three different types of balance. Number one is the symmetrical balance. Number two, the asymmetrical balance. And number three is the radial balance. Symmetrical balance is when objects in the artwork are balanced evenly. The second balance is the asymmetrical balance. It is when objects are balanced unevenly. And the last one is the radial balance. It is when objects are balanced in a circular or radial manner. In this artwork, the artist creates an artwork that is both symmetrical and radial. The objects are evenly positioned side to side and they even to be creating a circular movement. Proportion and unity in art is how the element of pieces is combined to create balance and harmony. In order to achieve this unity of art, there must be the balance and harmony with the seven elements of art. Unity can be achieved through repetitive and simplicity. Unity is like a visible clue. It would tell the pieces that they belong together. Example of unity includes shape, pattern, and contrast. Pattern is the consistent repetition of the elements with a composition of art. It must be consistent, exact repetition in order for it to be pattern. The next principle of art is contrast. Contrast is extreme. It's an opposite. The bigger the difference between the two things, the higher the contrast. It's just like there's an up and down far or near, loud or soft. The last principle is the movement. In visual, movement is used by the artist to direct the viewer through the artwork. It can be directed along lines, edges, shapes, and color. Movement is the design principles that uses some of the elements of art to produce the look of action or to convey the viewer's eye to sweep over the work of a certain manner. So now, that's how the elements of arts and principles of arts and designs connects with our lessons for today. We have here now the Western Classical Art Tradition Timeline and I will give you the overview of our lesson. Under the ancient period, we have the prehistoric and Egyptian period. Under the classical art, we have the Greek and Roman. And for the medieval art, we have the Byzantine, Romanesque, and Gothic. Art is the expression of ideas and emotion through a physical medium like painting, sculpture, film, writing, theater, photography, or dance. I hope you are fit and fine right now while listening, learning, and discovering new things while at the comfort of your own home. So let's start with our lesson. But before that, please take note of these three questions that you will be answering at the end of the discussion. Number 1. 
What are the different eras in Western classical art? Number two, based on the artworks created in the different era, what are their distinct characteristics? And number three, what is the theme of the different eras of Western classical art tradition? Western classical art includes prehistoric era. Do you have any idea about the paintings from the prehistoric era? Paintings were found inside the cave as a way of communicating with each other. Number two, paintings were more an artifact than a true picture of human first created art. And number three, Drawings of animals were usually correct in proportion. The dominant feature in the painting were large animals in the region. It was discovered on September 12, 1940 and given statutory ancient monument protection. Another example of the ancient art is the Egyptian's art. The Egyptian paintings make the deceased afterlife place pleasant. It emphasizes the importance of life after death and the preservation of knowledge in the past, and were highly stylized symbolic and shows profile view of an animal or a person. Ample painting of the Egyptian is the sarcophagus of the Tutankhamen. When we say sarcophagus, it is a stone coffin or a tomb. The paintings of the wall on the sarcophagus shows events of the life of the king while he was still on earth and the scenes he expects to encounter in the underworld is death. So as we see, the motive of Egyptian paintings is to make the deceased after life pleasant. The challenge of introducing the deceased to the gods of the underworld by using the skills of their defeating deities matters. It is also emphasized the existence of life after death and the preservation of the knowledge from the past. The second era is the classical art and under the classical art era is the Greek era and the Roman era. Painting from classical Greek era are commonly seen or found in bases, panels, and tomb. It depicts natural figure with dynamics composition. And most of the subject were battle scenes, mythological figures, and everyday scenes. They reveal a hold close of linear point of view and naturalist representation. Next is the most common method of Greek paintings. The fresco method of painting is a matter-based pigment on a freshly applied plaster usually on a wall surfaces. While the encaustic method of painting was developed by Greek ship builders who used hot wax to fill the cracks of the ship. So to summarize, fresco is made up of ground powder pigments mixed in pure water while the encaustic, it is made with hot wax. Vase painting is also called a kirk style or kirk vases. A red figured pottery named after the place where it was found. The shape commonly found are the pilike. It's a wine container. Second is the lecanis, a low bowl with two horizontal handles and a low broad foot. Third, the leaves gamikos with high handles and lead used to raise bridal bath. And lastly, the crater, a bowl used for mixing wine and water. Painted vases serve many different purposes. Number one is a container of wine and oil. Two, drinking vessels. And three, prizes of the games held at Athens every summer. Sample of the classical vase painting is the Judgment of Paris. So what can you say about the vase painting? 
it was a contest between the three most beautiful of Olympus for the price of golden apple addressed to the fairest. Next is the panel paintings. This can be flat panels of wood. It can be small, single piece or several panels joined together. And most of the panel paintings no longer exist because of their organic composition. The earliest panel painting is the pizza panel. The pizza panels or pizza tablets are a group of painted wooden tablets found in Pizza Corinthia. And lastly, the tomb or wall painting. One example is the tomb of the diver. Next to Greek era is the Roman era of the classical art. Most of the artwork in this technological know-how have been copied or imitated from Hellenic Greek painting. Hellenistic art appears more concerned with the human form. Roman painting has a variety of subjects, animals, everyday life, still life, mythological subjects, portraits, and landscapes. The improve of panorama painting is the main innovation of Roman painting from Greek painting. Roman era also introduced mosaic. Mosaic, it is an art process where an image is created using an assemblage of small pieces of colored glasses, stones, or other materials. This technique is used for ornamental arts and indoor decorations. The example of mosaic is the head of Alexander. This painting depicts the battle between the armies of Alexander the Great and Darius III of Persia. The next Western classical art is the medieval art era. Under the medieval art era is the Byzantine painting. This is the lively patterns which had been invented in Greek and Rome lived on in Byzantine. However, this time for Christian subjects. An example for this is the Villa of Mysteries. It depicts about Asian queen with dark eyes and hair with fierce expression named Chudora. Next is the Romanist painting under the medieval art era. These paintings are ordinarily positioned mosaics on the walls of the church, structures that follow a strict frontal pose. Christ in Majesty is an example of Romanist painting. This mural painting has been moved to Barcelona and replaced by replica. And lastly is the painting from Gothic era of the medieval art. Paintings have been confined in the elimination of manuscript pages and the painting of frescoes on the wall of churches in cosmopolitan style, elegant, manured, and sophisticated. Example of Gothic painting Lady and the Unicorn Tapestries Patterns like mild fleur or thousand flowers show influence which may have been due to the crusaders. Another example of Gothic painting is the rose window or wheel window. The rose window or wheel window is a stained glass windows were created to transform the vast stone interiors with warm and glowing color to instruct Christians in their faith. That ends our lesson for today. Now, prepare for an evaluation. Make a short description of each artwork. You will act as an expert or art critic where you will be critiquing artworks from Western classical traditions using this table. Activity 2 Answer the following questions. Number 1. 
How can you use your knowledge about Western classical art in real life? And number two, why is Western classical art traditions important? For those who didn't have a module, you may use this template and write this in a long carbon band and compile this in preparation for submission. Goodbye class and hope you enjoy our lesson for today. Bye-bye and see you in our PE class.